All right, folks. Let's quickly recap the Kanan Yakpezer T3 Jaeger for this year's Waffen Trigger boxes. Now, unfortunately, since initial debut back in May on the Super Test, the stats did not get changed much. It is still mediocre in terms of mobility compared to a Leopard prototype, and the firepower is not as high in terms of DPM or Alpha damage as a Waffen Trigger Panzer IV. So, it's the middle of a line between a medium tank and a tank destroyer, but it is based off of the Leopard 1 chassis with less armor as well as a oscillating turret featuring a 120mm, no autoloader, and no loader for the crew. So only a 3 man crew for this vehicle. Hard to train your radio operator or loaders for the Jagdpanzer line or Waffentrigger line, but it is more mobile per se than a Fernand or Jagdtiger in that terms, but it's still not as fast as an actual medium tank. So premium tier 9 makes more credits and bonds. Only a crew of 3 lacks a loader, lacks a radio operator. So no situational awareness for the view range or intuition for the shells. 120mm single shot. DPM wise, not the greatest. It's about the same as a Leopard prototype. It has a quick aim time. Very good accuracy, 7 degrees gun depression, but it's a pseudo turret, only 30 degrees per side. So it's like the Grail 15 in a sense, unfortunate, but traverse is alright. Penetration is decent, but not the craziest, and 420 alpha, blaze it. But in terms of the actual firepower, it's okay. It's the most accurate per se out of a standard gun, but... Don't shoot this gun while moving. So compare this to a 128, yes it's more accurate, but it has less alpha damage than the likes of the Waffentrigger Panzer IV with the 128, not the 150. So as you can see, 600 less DPM. You have a lot less alpha per shot, and even less penetration. But it is AP round, it has better accuracy, better aim time, and better turret traverse dispersion, even though hull traverse and tank traverse or hull moving dispersion is not as great. So don't shoot this gun while moving, practically. It flies faster slightly, but uh, module damage is also lower compared to 128. You carry more ammo, but potential damage is lower because less alpha. So in terms of firepower, it doesn't really hold up to a Waffentrigger Panzer IV. It is faster though, so that's a nice thing compared to the Panzer IV Waffentrigger, but this thing has no armor. 30 at the hull front, 40 at the turret front, and 30 all around for the hull. There's no armor whatsoever. I mean, you could bounce a few stray shots if they hit at an angle on the upper plate, like a 90mm on the upper plate. Not really. <laughs> It's still likely overmatched for most caliber at high tier. There's a mantlet armor somewhere. You could troll a few shots by the mantlet eating the shot, but highly unlikely. So this thing is very prone to high explosives and squash heads. Yeah, no armor to talk about. Not really. So mobility wise, it's about the same mobility as a Waffentrigger Panzer IV. Just a little bit faster in terms of top speed. Has the same terrain resistance as a Waffen Trigger Panzer IV, slightly better horsepower per ton ratio, but better top speed. So this thing is slightly more mobile than a Waffen Trigger Panzer IV, but nowhere, nowhere near a Leopard prototype. It's not even fast enough. So compared to a Leopard prototype, 20 less kilometers per hour top speed with worse terrain resistance, and about the same DPM, better accuracy, Better aim time, not as good dispersion while moving, but better for turret traverse dispersion. Slower shell velocity, it is AP compared to APCR. And only a limited turret traverse with 30 less meters of view range. About the same camo too. About the same health. So practically a slower Leopard prototype. <laughs> Otherwise, eh, it's okay of a medium tank. If this thing would have a autoloader, then that would be a lot better, like a 3 round or 4 round 120mm as a tank destroyer. But no, 
It's the same category as a SU-130PM compared to a Scorpion G, so limit turret traverse and no autoloader means it's more difficult to play with this vehicle than an actual turreted tank destroyer like with the ship TVP-100 or the Scorpion G. So basically for this vehicle, you will want a rammer similar to the Waffentrigger Panzer IV. I would suggest a binoculars to camp by yourself and a turbocharger to make it go a little bit faster just in case. But you can also swap this out for a vent in the second slot or you don't really need help with the accuracy or aim time. So you could put coated optics, binoculars, maybe the low exhaust for your camo. You don't need the health buff that is superfluous for a tank destroyer. You already have less health than the average. So I would suggest mostly binoculars. Camo net and binoculars are really for camping. And for today's maps, all corridor maps without actual shooting valleys or shooting galleries, uh, kind of difficult, but still I would recommend a binocular setup with the turbocharger and rammer. It is close top, so obviously vents is another option, but field modification wise, similar to the Panzer IV Waffentrigger, go with the first one for better terrain resistance to help out with the actual effective traverse of the hull. Better accuracy and aim time, both are superfluous, so go with better accuracy. It already has good enough aim time too, so better accuracy doesn't really hurt. Now, camo after shooting or view range, both are not really that great, but after shooting camo is already garbage, only 2% to 1%, so might as well go with better view range. This one is just useless. Concealment after firing is very situational, only applied to something like an E25 with the rapid firing small caliber gun per se. And finally, DPM or aim circle size. Now granted, the DPM buff from this thing doesn't really help that much. So it is about 200 for the Waffen Trigger Panzer IV, but what if you miss your shot? So you, don't, you should not really miss your shot unless you're moving and shooting while moving. So I would suggest more DPM to help out with the lower DPM than the average. But overall, originally I rated this vehicle at 4 out of 10. <laughs> so yeah, AP instead of APCR, it is slower and better accuracy than the Leopard prototype, but a hell of a lot slower. Lower horsepower per time ratio, less health, pseudo turret. Now, the original comparison to why a Waffen trigger off E100 is better than the AMX Fosh B is because the turret, you can actually aim the gun and quickly readjust whereas the Fosh B, you have to turn around and move the actual hull. It's the same comparison between a Scorpion G and the SU-130PM. So with the limited traverse of those pseudo turrets of a tank destroyer, so tier 8, and we can compare the SU-130PM it's a pseudo turret. Yes, it has the same alpha. Yes, it's punchy and better camo than the SU or than the Scorpion G, but the Scorpion G is faster with a fully traversable turret. So this vehicle is more popular than the SU 130PM. Same goes with the original Waffentrigger off E100 compared to the AMX Fosh B. You cannot move the vehicle around that quickly for the autoloader. So. That is the main downside of a pseudo turret, but for the kind of Yak Panzer T3 Jaeger, still a 4 out of 10. It's not good crew trainer, it doesn't do that much damage, it is not the fastest or the stealthiest of camos, so it is also brittle, susceptible, uh, susceptible to high explosive rounds and artillery shells, and that's practically it. So it is a premium, which is nice, but overall, seems pretty mediocre to sub mediocre yep might as well play with leopard prototype well there we go folks a quick recap of the kana yak panzer t3 jaeger for this year's often trigger boxes so good luck to your rolls maybe you get double or copies and you get the gold compensation but surprisingly the gold compensation for this vehicle is not as high as the t 54 heavy tank. It is only 11,300. So about the same as a tier 8 premium heavy tank. Whereas a tier 9 premiums usually 
have a higher cost, right? About 13,000, maybe 14,000 per se, but hopefully you get the higher ones compared to a 6,700 for the Fox. That is kind of low, but it's a good vehicle. Still kind of low though, in terms of gold cost. It's actually pretty good if you buy it straight up. Oh, well, there we go, folks. As always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. She's a moon, you're